Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on transmission line theory. For this video, I'm going to share how can we actually calculate or also obtain the input impedance, which is denoted as Z in of a transmission line. So this will be the objective of this video. This will be the part 11 series discussion on transmission line theory. So if you're keen to know more about transmission line theory, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on transmission line theory. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, once again, thank you so much for your strong support. Let's do a very quick revisit on the lossless transmission line, which I have discussed on the part seven series discussion. In order to find the voltage at any point on the transmission line, what you need to do is basically a submission of incident wave plus reflected wave. When these two waves is added together, you will be able to obtain the overall voltage at any particular point on the transmission line. As for current, okay, because the reflected current actually moves in the opposite direction, and hence for current is simply the incident wave minus away the reflected wave. Again, any point of current on the transmission line, you can easily find by having the incident wave okay, with the current minus the reflected wave of the current, then you will be able to achieve the overall current at any point of the transmission line. This I have discussed extensively on the part seven series discussion. I would like to focus on this diagram again. Remember, at the part seven series discussion, I mentioned that I like to take a reference at the load. So basically at the reference at the load, this will be zero since I take a reference. And when I actually move to the left, okay, for example, the length of this transmission line, I denote them as L. So therefore at the location of L, the Z will be equal to minus L. Again, if you are not sure what I'm saying, please again, revisit the part seven series discussion on the transmission line theory. Let's quickly understand this again. So this is what I have mentioned earlier on, the incidence plus the refractor wave. As for the current, okay, I do slightly different okay, because I want to make everything constant okay, with the V naught and V naught minus here, basically with the reference of voltage. So therefore for current is simply voltage divided by impedance. So therefore this is another way Okay, to denote this incident wave and also this refractor wave. Now, for example, if I want to find my voltage and current at the load side, so basically at the load side, the Z is equal to zero. So this Z will be equal to zero and Z zero basically equals to one. So therefore I have V naught plus, same for this term here. Therefore I have this V naught minus here. Same for the current again. So basically, if I want to know the current at this particular point, okay, the Z is equal to zero, it's the same. So therefore, this will be the outcome of the current at this particular point. As for the voltage at this particular point, will be denoted as this. Next, let's quickly move to the position, okay, which is over here, as I illustrate. At this portion here, the Z will be equal to minus L. So from here, you can see that my Z, I need to replace with minus L. Minus minus become positive, and the Z will be replaced by L. Same for this term here, I multiply the Z as minus L. So this part will become minus, mm -hmm. and I have the L over here. So basically, this voltage, okay, which is at this point, can be represented by this equation. As for the current, is the same. Okay, so basically the current at this particular point, the Z will be equal to minus L. 
So therefore, over here, minus minus become positive. My Z, I replace by L. Same for this term here, everything the same. Except over here, Z replaced by minus L. So therefore, I have the minus term. And this will be the L term. So this will be the current at this particular point of the transmission line. Okay, now let's understand how we can actually obtain the characteristic impedance of the transmission point. Okay, again, this will be in general formula. So in order to obtain the characteristic impedance of the transmission line will be the incidence voltage over the incident current. On the other side, you can also make use of the refractor voltage over the refractor current to achieve, to find the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. Let me give you an example. Okay, for example, let's do it with the incident wave. So the incident wave, as I mentioned earlier on, okay, for example, the voltage okay, for the incidence will be this. So I have V O E minus J beta Z here. Okay, as for my incident current, I can replace by this IO plus here. Okay, so you can see over here, okay, this will be my IO plus. These two is the same thing, I cancel with each other. So I obtain my characteristic impedance okay, with the help of the incident wave, okay, which is obtained over here. Next, I can also make use of the refracted wave. Okay, by making use of the refracted wave will be the voltage will be here. Okay, V naught minus EJ beta z okay over my refractor wave of the current okay please be careful about the minus i need to be included here okay so therefore this will be the characteristic impedance okay of the transmission line making use of the refractor wave nevertheless these two are quite similar which later on you will understand better when we actually discuss more on the transmission line theory next Okay, I'm going to find my refraction coefficient. Okay, as for refraction coefficient will be refractor voltage over the incidence voltage. On the other side, I can also use the refracted current or incident current. So over here, I make use the function of voltage to find my refraction coefficient. Over here, I make use of my current in order to find the refraction coefficient. Again, let me give you some example. Okay, for example, okay, when I actually make use of the voltage term, okay, refractor voltage will be this term here. Okay, you can see that uh, this term is over here. My incident voltage will be this term here. So it's over here. So this term minus minus, you can see that they become J2 beta Z. Okay, same over here, I can make use of my current function okay, to find my refraction coefficient. Okay, again, you can take a look over here. So this will be the refracted current. Okay, which is over here. As for my incident currents will be here. So again, I can actually obtain the refraction coefficient by making use of the current function. Okay, next I want to mention this. Okay, typically okay, we have refraction coefficient at the load side. So hence at the load side, the z will be equal to zero. So therefore, this is where my refraction coefficient at the load. Same as for the current. Okay, because the z is equal to zero, and therefore I have this function over here. Okay, just want to keep this in mind. E zero is equal to one. So therefore, this is the refraction coefficient at the load. So these two values should be identical. Now let's quickly understand how we can actually find the input impedance of transmission line. Okay, when we actually say the input impedance is when we actually look into this direction, what will be my impedance? So you can see that it's basically almost the same as the source. But let's understand this in a deeper. Okay, so in order to obtain the input impedance, okay, I need to take the voltage divided by the current. I guess this should be very well explained by the Ohm's law. So this VZ, okay, these are the two terms which I have utilized many many times over here so basically this is the v term this is the item okay so i put them together here so at this point my z is equal to zero okay uh, sorry my z is equal to minus l so i replace my z as minus l so from here you can see that this minus minus become positive and become a l okay this positive 
this z replaced by minus so overall it become a minus term and this will be my l term same from here okay replaced by minus l so minus minus become positive and my z replaced by l term okay so this will be positive multiplied by minus l so overall will be minus and this will be the term here so i didn't do much what i need to do is basically i substitute my z as minus l and therefore i obtain this equation from here i can see that i have a general common factor of z zero so therefore i like to put them okay right in front here so you can see from here i didn't do much so what i need to do is basically they divide by z no i put them right into the front here which i obtain this equation as you can see over here here i just take the z note out and obtain this equation here okay so next what i'm going to do is okay earlier on i have mentioned that this reflection coefficient is equal to v naught minus over v naught plus okay you can see that this v naught minus is actually equals to the v naught plus multiplied by the reflection coefficient so i rewrite the equation of v naught minus okay as the reflection coefficient and v o plus okay because cross multiply v o minus is equals to reflection coefficient multiplied by v o plus okay so i rewrite this equation over here so next okay what well, i actually see a common factor of v naught plus and v naught plus over here so i take it out and cancel each other so therefore i achieve this equation here so over here what i need to do is basically i remove away all the v no plus okay because v no plus over v no plus it become one so therefore i achieve this equation next okay i guess you know that i have keep on using this reflection coefficient equation okay which is equal to zl minus z naught over zl plus z naught okay so since i have already derived this equation so if you are not sure how i actually derived this equation please take a look on my earlier version discussion on the transmission line theory. So my reflection coefficient can be replaced by this term. Okay, what I'm going to do is this is the reflection coefficient. I'm going to replace by this term, which I have explained earlier on. So this will be the another steps. Next. Okay, so you can see from here, okay, this is a general. So what I'm going to do is I put general over here. So my EJ beta l multiplied by z l plus z naught okay which is mentioned over here okay so if you know what i want to say so next over here okay so this will be e minus j beta multiplied by z l minus z naught here so which is over this term here so this will be the common term underneath it here so same wise for over here okay so basically e j beta length multiplied by z l plus z naught okay which is over here Okay, next, okay, this is minus term here. You can see that this will be a minus term. So it will be minus E J beta L over this set L minus set naught. Okay, again, you can see that it's over this term here. So from here, I actually can, again, cancel away this Z L plus Z naught. We simplify the equation here. Okay, so I remove away this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the bracket. So basically Z L multiplied by e j beta l z naught multiplied by e j beta l here okay same for here z l multiplied by this term here minus z naught multiplied by this term here same as for the below okay i leave this for you to understand okay to try it on on yourself but trust me you will be able to arrive at this equation here so once i obtain this equation i'm going to pair for example z l and z l together z naught and z naught together so basically from here you can see my z l okay will be e j beta l okay another z l will be here will be a plus e minus j beta l here as for z naught over here i have e j beta l here okay so z naught over here is a minus so therefore it's a minus here okay so i get this term here okay below is the same for example i get the common factor of z l here will be e j beta l okay so this is a minus so therefore it's a minus the e minus j beta l here same for z naught z naught will be here will be e j beta l it will be a plus term here e minus j beta l okay so next i'm going to use my mathematics equation to solve this equation if you still remember this is the mathematical equation 
the sine theta equals to e j theta minus e minus j theta over 2 j. As for cosine, you can see that the key drastic difference is this instead of minus, it become a plus. I don't have a j term here. So next, I can do a cross multiply. Okay, so this ej minus ej beta here is equal to 2j sine theta here. Same thing over here, I can do a cross multiply. Okay, so basically this term here will be equal to 2 cosine theta. So what I want to do is basically I want to substitute into this, 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 this with sine and cosine term. Okay, let's take a closer look again. Okay, so this is what I have derived on my previous page. Okay, this in is this equation here. And I have these two mini equation over here. Okay, so let's understand. So what I mentioned earlier on, this term here, okay, I can replace by 2 cosine theta. This term here, I can replace by j2 sine theta here. This term here again, I can replace by j2 sine theta here. And this term here, I can replace by 2 cosine theta here. So therefore, I replace all what I have measured earlier on. I see a common factor of 2. I remove away all the 2 here. So I actually get this outcome. So next, I'm going to divide by cosine term, cosine beta L here. So same as here, I'm going to divide by cosine beta L. So in short here, basically this divide by cosine, it become 1. So I left this set L alone. So sine over cosine is actually equal to tangent. So therefore, I managed to find this tangent portion. So from here, you can see that I actually calculate the input impedance. At any point of the transmission line, basically, this will be the equation for the input impedance of transmission line. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you soon. Bye for now. Thank you.